You've got your web API and now you want to inject the service into your controller and to register the service you're not sure should I use at scoped, at singleton, at transient. What does this actually mean? Let's clear this up once and for all in this tutorial. All right, so here is my little web API project in .NET 7 in Visual Studio 2022. We've got the program CS here. We've got a model infected. And if you're wondering what the heck infected, Patrick, really? Well, let's just say I'm a really big fan of the specific video game and now also TV series. If you can relate, please show me that in the comments. So we've got infected and infected people can have a certain stage. That's everything in essence. And these stages are here in the infected service. They can be a runner, stalker, clicker, and so on. And now in this service here, we've got a dummy list, let's say, of infected. Please note, very important, this is not a static list, all right? It's just a public list of this entity here. And now in the service, we've got three methods. We wanna get the count of the infected list. We wanna get the actual list with the stages. And then also another method that doesn't return anything. It just increases the amount of infected. So there is one more with a random stage. That's it. We've got the interface here because we wanna inject this thing into our infected controller. And now comes the interesting part, right? So here are our endpoints. We've got the HTTP gets with uh, the count route to get the infected count. We've got the default get to get the complete list here. And now with HTTP post, you might wonder, Patrick, what the heck, why do we need two infected services here? You're totally right. Normally you wouldn't do that. It would be totally sufficient, of course, and way better really to just inject one service. And this service then uh, would call or you would call the increased uh, increase infected method from the service and then just return the get infected list or the result of this list then. But I want to make something clear here and that's why we need two services to show you what is actually going on there. But you will learn what I mean in a couple of minutes. And then we've got our program CS and as you can already see here, I'm registering this service as a singleton. And now let's just run this and then have a look what is actually happening here and I'm actually debugging this thing because in there we can really see uh, what is going on inside of our web API. So now here's Swagger UI. We can try this out. We get a count of three. Perfect, right? Then here, try this out. We get the complete list, three infected. And now, very interesting, of course, remember we registered this thing as a singleton. Try this out, we hit execute we get one more and execute this thing again and another one. So now we've got five and now we've got six. Awesome. Now what about the count? Where is it? Here it is, six, great. We can reload this thing and again we get six and the complete list gives us also six infected. And now when we actually set a breakpoint here in our, not there, in the controller actually. Here, this is the interesting part, right? So we've got the infected service, the first one, and then also the second one injected as a singleton. And when we run this method, the post method, one more time, we hit execute, then we should actually, well, that was not the post method. This is what I actually wanted to execute. Here, now we hit the breakpoint. We can open this and here we see two services. Actually, it seems like two services, right? Both have the count of six. And now let me just jump into this method. Yep, we add one infected to the list. Down here now we've got seven. And when we then go back to our controller, we can also see that the first sev service has seven and the second one as well. Interesting, right? So this is really just one service, the same service here when you register this thing as a singleton. And that's why we also get the seven then back. This is different later, not later, in a couple of minutes when we see uh, or register this thing as a transient service. So please keep that in mind. This is now a singleton. And also very important, it, it works 
throughout the whole lifetime of our web API here. When we just restart this thing, what we can of course do is I want to stop this and rerun this thing. Then there we are. And now we again only get three. All right. So this is the, the beginning here, these three. In fact, that is what we get. Now, again, interesting. As a singleton, we can add more and more infected. If I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry for that, but I really, really want to clear this up here because it can be so confusing. And I know that so many have trouble, including me, had trouble uh, getting that really. What is going on there, right? So again, singleton, you, you create one instance of this service, no matter where you're injected and how many times you're injected throughout the whole lifetime of the web API. And when you uh, make a web service call, a request, an HTTP request, then you get this instance and everything this instance uh, gets here or has here, like the count and the number of infected. <laughs> All right, now let's stop this and uh, register this thing as a scoped service. All right, so now let me spare you any any kind of uh, definitions here, no theory really, I just want to show you directly what is going on here, right? So the results for the count and the, the complete list are the same, but interesting here now is what is actually happening when we execute this thing. Maybe just uh, remove the breakpoint first. And again, we get now four infected, the runner, runner, clicker and shambler. And what's happening now? again for runner, runner, clicker, runner. And now again, and again, and again, we only get four back and never more than four. Now, why is that? Well, the theory says that the scoped service is created for every single HTTP request. This means since we have no static list of infected up here. This is why I, I told you this a couple of minutes ago. This will be created again and again and again with every web service call. And this is what you actually, I think, need most of the time. Just for the lifetime of this request, you have an instance of this service. And in our controller, this is important. Infected service and infected service two are the same instance in essence. So again, when we execute this and now let's hit the breakpoint, we execute this thing. Again, we can step into this. We add one infected, right? So now we've got four and then we go back. And here again, we've got these two services, count four, count four, all right? But it will never increase. So we will never get five when we do it like that. If I would make this list static here in the in the actual service, then of course this thing will live throughout the lifetime of uh, this instance of the web API, of the web service in essence, right? I mean, actually we can do that of course, just to show you. Let's just uh, run this again. There we are. And now let me just remove the breakpoint again. We run this, try it out. We've got four. No, we've got five, six, and so on. And now it works. Th the result is similar to the uh, actual singleton. If you would have um, regist registered the service as a singleton, but still this Actually, what is actually happening here, we've got a new instance with every call, with, e with every request, but only because I um, declared this, uh, where is it again? Declared this list here as static, it works like that, right? So please don't confuse these two things here. This is a public list now for this example, not static. We can uh, stop this and run this one more time. And only now when you register your service as a singleton, then you can, as you can see here, increase the number again and again and again, but not with a scoped service. And even here now, 
when we hit execute we only get three back and here it will return our original list all right so this is now a big difference already between singleton and scoped and now let's do the last one when we go to our infected control <laughs> infected controller the program cs um we register this thing as a transient stop this save this and run this again and this is the only reason why i injected two services of the of the same type here into the controller because now this will be interesting real quick the dotnet web academy starts soon it's an online program where we cover all things dotnet web development with blazor git azure and more pretty much everything you need to know if you want to land a job in the dotnet web development world and also the exclusive dotnet web academy community for all your questions and if you want to be the first to know when it opens and if you want to get a discount then make sure to subscribe to my newsletter or check out the link below to get a spot on the waiting list list thank you very much and now back to the tutorial we get our count of three that's great we get our list here runner runner clicker and now take a guess what do you think would we get try this out execute only three so we actually add an infected but it returns only three, the original ones. Now, why is that? Well, let's have a look. So again, breakpoint here, run this one more time. And now we see again, two services here, count three, count three. Let's jump into this one. We add an infected. And when we now have a look again, we see that here's the count. Uh, this count is four and this count is only three and this is what we get back from the service call it's only these three infected and why is it like that well with a transient service here you get a new instance of your service with actually not an http request but every single time you want to call a method for instance of the service so every single time every single time you access this service you create a new instance and this is the big difference and now to answer the question when should you use what kind of service well again i think most of the time ad scoped is totally sufficient of course it depends you don't want to hear this answer here you have to think about what is actually going on what do you want to use what do you want to do with your services here and in the end it's also a question of memory right so when you use a singleton service for instance right it will actually live throughout the lifetime of your web api which means when it crashes could be the case that memory leaks occur right so this is something to think about maybe you don't need it with an ad scoped with a scoped service it will be created with a web service call and then also will be shut down hopefully correctly so maybe this is better and regarding transient when you uh, well want to access your service or want to use lots lots of methods of a transient service then every single time you get a new instance and this could also add up to lots and lots of memory uh, that you actually don't need right so maybe this is not the the perfect uh, way then to use a transient service so again in my opinion really but this is just my opinion i would love to hear yours ad scoped is the way to go so hopefully this clears up things once and for all and if you want to make more with your web api then i think this video here on the screen is the right one for you so please check this one out